Hello and welcome to the Smarter Food Supply Chain webinar series. I'm Mike Allen and I serve AIM as their member engagement manager. AIM North America is an alliance enabling the cooperation, development, standardization of AIDC technologies. From barcodes to RFID to IoT, AIM North America is your advocate. Any organization with an interest in data collection is a beneficiary of these efforts. Membership provides an opportunity to influence the direction of the industry, develop policies and standards, access market reports, and engage new partners. Before we get started, there are a few housekeeping items I would like to go over. First is our antitrust policy. It's the policy of AIM Inc. to conduct its operations in compliance with the antitrust laws. No AIM activities shall create even the appearance of a violation of the letter or spirit of the antitrust laws. Also, AIM North America's collaboration and work product policy states that presentations like today's are held for the primary purpose of advancements in our industry, which necessarily involves development of work product intended solely for the public domain. AIM has developed this policy for the protection of its members who engage in this important collaborative effort. Also, attendees are muted throughout the presentation. If you have a question, Amy will be answering some at the end of the presentation. You can ask questions by chatting those to AIM member services. You will also be notified when this presentation recording is available. Today, I'm here with Amy Awe of Avery Dennison. Amy's a market development manager who works within RFID and food. Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Michael. And thank you to AIM for allowing me to present today. So good morning and afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the AIM culture of food safety as applies to the consumer. Uh, so a Avery Dennison is a global material science company that specializes in design, manufacture of uh, many varieties of labeling and functional materials. So these products are used in many industries such as press pressure sensitive labels, uh, graphic applications and bonds um, in the industrial, medical and retail applications as well, such as tags and embellishments and RFID solutions as well, surveying a wide range of markets that include the food supply chain and apparel. So Avery Dennison has been a leader in automatic identification and capture uh, launching multiple breakthrough products and leading the way into the connected world. So I'm Amy Awe, as Michael introduced. I'm a market development manager for RFID for Avery Dennison for the food supply chain and my career in food manufacturing, distribution, food service has led me to Avery Dennison where I apply practical food supply chain learning to enable brands to implement supply chain traceability using leading technologies. So what is a food safety culture? So it could refer to specific um, beliefs, attitudes, practices, and values that are going to be consistently displayed within an organization. So while you may have some different beliefs in what can also make up a food safety culture. Some, these are some of the key elements that are gonna be part of a successful culture. Things like um, strong leadership where leaders can identify goals and help provide focus and engagement with in employees and letting them be part of design and implementation of food safety programs and management visibility. So um, not just, uh, you know, leading by example um, to their employees and kind of walking the talk um, and making sure that it's not an employee only when management doesn't follow the rules. And other items such as accountability, um, you know, effective communication, uh, management needs to communicate these expectations. Employees also need to be able to be heard uh, with voicing concerns or suggestions for improvement. And then also following safe practices, you know, could be, um, folk, you know, focusing on meetings, um, also exceeding, exceeding the industry's best food safety practices. Now, not trying to be an organization that's just going to try to meet those minimum requirements. So some questions you could ask yourself when you really evaluate your food operation, um, the commitment to food safety could be like, do I believe that 
this food safety program is even important for actually preventing food safety issues? Um, am I willing to actually share my food safety concerns or ideas for improvement uh, above me? Uh, am I willing to invest company resources for food safety? And is it reasonable for people even in the company to expect to follow this you know, food safety guideline label for them? So the average cost of a recall for a food company now in just direct cost alone is $10 million. And that doesn't include um, brand damage, loss of sales, according to a study from the Food Marketing Institute and Grocery Manufacturers Association. So Frank Yunus um, is the Deputy Commissioner for Food Policy and Response at the FDA. And if you haven't had a chance to review, the FDA released a guide here called Food for Thought. And it's ideas on how to bring a new era of food uh, smart food safety. So this document, the FDA speaks to being able to support and strengthen the culture that embrace food safety at the FDA and in farms and in facilities. So they really lay out uh, importance of a food safety culture and the behavior change within the agency and the work practices as well as outlining to promote that culture throughout the food system through a term that they refer to as a modern approach for modern times. So smarter food safety isn't just a slogan or timeline, it's more than that. Um, instead, it's a new approach to food safety, it's a new mindset, one that recognizes and builds on the progress made in the past, but it's gonna incorporate and use new technologies that are being used in society and business and all other sectors around us, such as could be like blockchain or sensor technology, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence. So by digi digitizing the brand um, in a food supply chain, we can uh, enable organizations to really realize the way to collect data that can connect with the consumer meat, um, connect the consumer to their meals um, in very personalized ways and also provide content that consumers looking for. We know AIDC can help meet that goal, food safety culture, by capturing that information to validate those products. Increasing uh, the consumer's access to this trusted nutritional information, such as the allergens and product handling, um, recalls. So this is a very excellent way of meeting FDA's goal to help consumers access and understand and utilize new technologies relevant to food safety. So what are consumers interested in? So FMI and Label Insights released a study back in 2018 called the Transparency Imperative. It's the pr uh, product labeling from the consumer perspective. It examined um, key findings regarding transparency and what they suggest is industry next step. Um, and it really, the study dove past just beyond ingredient nutritional value to kind of really understand the definition of traceability and what other information the consumer is really looking for and then how they would expect to find it and how they find it today. So today, you know, consumers have a lot of attributes about themselves. We know that consumers now are becoming increasingly health orientated around wanting fresh or natural uh, food, maybe organic, um, very polarized um, consumer with different priorities or maybe values and the services they're getting when they're being served. And they're wanting bold and authentic adventurous meals. And they're and activists as well. So they want that transparent. They want companies that are um, doing having sustainable practices or sourcing food locally. Um, so some of the key findings that was in that transparency imperative study is that 74% of the consumers 
said that they would actually switch the brand that they usually buy to a whole new brand that provides more in-depth product information than what they can simply find by picking up a product and looking to see what is on the label. And the same amount of consumers that they are very or somewhat likely to utilize a smartphone to be able to access that product information. And half of shoppers are willing to pay more money for a product that's gonna offer product information beyond is what is, than what is just on the label. And 90% of the consumers are likely to take advantage of information about a product on a smartphone with almost very half likely do, to do so. The number one finding in here was that for brand owners in this study is to take in very serious consideration the product's transparency and to go beyond just that ingredient nutritional information on the label. So standards are all around us in food. These are just a few examples um, that the food industry has and within different groups and guidelines to enable um, a safer, more transparent supply chain. The FDA plans um, specifically to overcome these challenges in a system using an approach it's calling a new era smarter food, which is going to help leverage technology such as blockchain, artificial intelligence, internet of things. It's gonna, it will be actually FSMA based, uh, but technology and labels and people led. So Frank Guinness, who I mentioned earlier, the deputy commissioner for the FDA says that in his view that today's food system is amazing, but it does have one major Achilles heel of a lack of trans traceability and transparency. And you don't have to look too far to see what a lack of traceability has cost us. So talking just a little bit more about the FDA's new era smarter food safety, there are four main points of pillars that um, are gonna be focused on for that. The first one is a tech enabled traceability and outbreak response. So just diving onto that piece a little bit more, the FDA is gonna deploy, will employ some new and emerging digital technologies, uh, including things around data exchange, digital hyperledgers, blockchain, um, in, in order to try to rapidly trace food to all the way back to its origin when necessary and isolate contaminated food and prevent it to being a risk consumers. Um, this is gonna require a lot of key data elements and standards systems to enable that traceability. It's also gonna require a lot of thinking and acting more holistically beyond the interest of individual links in the supply chain. So it really is to the interoperability. And the other pillars are smarter tools and approaches uh, for prevention, new business models and retail modernization, and again, that food safety culture. It's more than just the sum of the regulations put in place for like a facility. It's just the behavior of that organization um, from that leaders as well as the customers and suppliers. So in the fall last year, the FDA had a public hearing where the agency spoke in some details of the plan and they stressed, um, you know, the level of unprecedented collaboration openness that would be required among supply chains to really think smarter and different about food safety and Frank stated that without that common understanding of new food safety threats in a marketplace and kind of recognizing those benefits and the new technologies that there's, it's not gonna be realized and that producers and standards organization, organizations, food manufacturers, uh, retailers, consumers um, must work together to achieve that. So um, the FDA has, reviewed the comments and we're preparing to release their findings in March, but it was um, delayed to the pandemic and it's now expected to be released in the coming weeks. 
And they just recently said that they've actually went back and revised this blueprint they're getting ready to release in light of some of the lessons learned during this this pandemic. Um, And it's really has accelerated the need for these measures. So one of the points that they said they had to go back and kind of relook at is around that enhanced traceability for the supply chain. Um, What became clear to them during that this time is that enhanced traceability is also a helpful tool in understanding the supply chain impacts to the public health. And they believe that a digitized food system is likely to be a strong, more agile, resilient food system because of it. So what can um, digital supply chains bring? Um, They can offer transparency to to the supply chain. Items that uh, have the ability to be born digital are gonna have those unique identifiers that can provide very granular visibility that consumers are asking for, right? We talked about they are more interested in knowing what's beyond just the ingredient statement or nutritional level. So the research from Center of Food Integrity found that about 65% of consumers want to know more about where their food comes from. And data collected through the supply chain can aid in operational and marketing decisions about could be product freshness, um, temperature integrity, recall management, and providence, and nutritional claims such as is this product organic or maybe GMO free. So digital supply chains can enable these brands to understand even some of the operational aspects such as ordering and inventory operations within a facility or dwell times and rotation. It's no longer enough for brands to just rely anymore on outdated, you know, paper-based processes that we still see today that really hinder traceability and it disables sometimes these employees from taking actionable measure with uh, many times a very incomplete data. So on your screen now, here's an example of a digital link. So a digital link, it differs than like a a static information that you might find on a QR code. The digital link is um, an emerging standard uh, enabling brands to be able to engage with their consumers about details about the products that they're purchasing. So in this example, you have a digital link that you can actually scan now, um, opening the camera app on your phone. So newer models of smartphones are already enabled to read these links without the need to download a specific app. So in this example, you see Fresh Cafe has made a romaine salad with shredded carrots. Because they have digitized their supply chain, their restaurant operation, they can actually share product master data from a trusted source about the salad that may not otherwise be found on an ingredient or that nutrition label. So this custom salad can contain the data passed through the supply chain and shared with the customer. This could be generated at the time like the order is made and then it's supplied to the customer on say the packaging or receipt. So this digital link can even prevent the sale of an item at the time of sale if the lot is known to be recalled or expired. Also, the data can be dynamically updated after the product is sold. So if there is a food safety issue arises on a component in the salad on one of the ingredients, the default screen that appears when that, um, that barcode, that digital link scanned could say something like, the sale it is under a voluntary recall from the vendor, along with maybe some instructions on what to do with the salad. And it's an awesome way for that brand also to connect with that consumer, rebuilding some brand trust and loyalty. Also, if there is no um, food safety issues uh, with the component of the salad, then when the customer views the recall status on the screen, they can actually see that there is no safety issues within those components. Other useful information um, can be shared, such as 
storage guidelines, maybe reheating guidelines if applicable. Um, after the best buy date is passed, the consumer could receive a message that the product is passed, just, you know, maybe full nutritional value period. If the product is um, if the product is consumed, please ensure, you know, that it's been stored properly. So the FMI um, part of the study was they found that 90% of consumers are very likely to take advantage of information about a product on a smartphone, with almost half very likely to do so. But even if no one scans the barcode, um, that one of the world's leading traceability experts commented that people may not want to scan the barcode, but they want to know that they are able to and get that information. So this screen here, um, if you are able, from where you're sitting, if you are able to scan that digital code, um, that digital link, what should have came up is similar to what's on the screen now. Um, it would redirect you to a page that displayed like the sales contents and some of the other attributes that the brand can decide on what, what they do or do not want to share. Consumers could confirm maybe that their product is fresh, it's not under recall, um, they could trust the information on allergens and provenance and sustainably caught. The digital links on a single data carrier on pack utilizing a standard format provide uh, value to the brand, retailer, the consumer, um, and it also works at POS systems. It allows access to brand authorized sources of information by all with the ability to customize experiences for the consumer. It takes that supply chain's transparency and it, and it puts it in their hands. Um, this can build that transparency trust at a one-to-one -one connection with that consumer. Also with increasing nutritional and allergen guidelines being introduced around the world, uh, this is a convenient, trusted source for consumers to obtain the information they need to make lifestyle decisions in an informed manner. So the EU food and information and consumer regulation allergen provisions, which apply to prepackaged food and food service is one example. Another one closer to home is the FDA and USDA have a joint effort on general principles of food standard modernization um, due this July, which has safeguard for economic adulteration protection uh, for the consumer and requiring some information to be disclosed to promote a consumer healthier lifestyle. So just to recap then, um, you know, we know that a successful food safety cultures are going to be able to share and embrace communication for the employees, allowing employees also to have that input and buy-in um, in their food safety cultures um, and that digitizing of that supply chain, um, having that traceability will be a tech-enabled um, supply chain. We know intelligent labels uh, can support those building blocks and really digitize the supply chain to capture events um, throughout. And by using intelligent labels and having that digital identity, that digital twin, um, through the supply chain, because um, typically sometimes you see that maybe that traceability sort of end at the back door of a facility, but continuing that traceability throughout that operation and utilizing something such as the digital link and really to be, bring together that supply chain traceability and find a way to connect it to the consumer versus just being able to find the product throughout the supply chain and trace it. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate your insights here today. Uh, we do have a few questions uh, in the chat uh, right now that I will ask, but there's still time if uh, anyone has questions they would like to add to that. So with that being said, Amy, are you ready to take some questions from the audience? Sure. Yep. Will the uh, USDA FDA compel full chain electronic traceability? Well, um, I'm not an FDA, so I can't speak to what I think they 
you know, will a world not do. Um, however, even, you know, without compelling, you know, even without a very compelling full chain traceability, the benefits for the members, obviously, the supply chain from the producer to the consumer will make a digital food supply chain um, a business requirement. Okay, thank you. Another question we have is, you speak a lot about interoperable food traceability. What benefit do I receive other than rather just tracking my own operation? I would say there's probably two significant benefits. Um, the first, you know, full, full chain traceability is going to provide you with information um, for usable products on hands and, and product certification claims that you might need to optimize your business. But the other is really adoptions of standards, you know, are going to lower the cost of technology barriers to adopt. Um, it's gonna, it creates kind of that global interoperability uh, supply chain, enabling a lot more flexibility for both suppliers and operators. Thank you for that. And are there specific technologies that I need to adopt for traceability? Well, what you want to look at for our suppliers that are adhering to GS1 standard in order to identify, capture, and share, um, this is going to give you more flexibility to really adopt to your business using emerging technology. So sometimes people want to confuse the data carrier with the data content. Uh, the data carrier, such as you know, RAIN RFID or 2D barcodes, is the carrier that meet your data capture needs. Um, there will always be some new emerging uh, data carriers, data content, or the data in a carrier that aligns with, you know, identity standards will will future proof your implementation. So you don't have to go back later and make infrastructure changes just because the data carrier changed. Okay, great. Another question we have is about, you know, that they've heard that people are willing to pay more uh, money for these uh, solutions, but in your eyes, uh, how much more is that? I mean, they're not looking for a specific number, but like, mm -hmm. yeah, how much more money would that be? Well, it takes very little to invest in um, to, to, for, to get started um, exploring digitizing a supply chain. You know, it's, it's about, determining where where what problem do you want to solve first and is it um, you know in vertical supply chains or you can really determine um, what investment you need based on what practices some of your other partners within the supply chain are using I, I would really say an analyzing what it's costing you today and not digitizing um, your items, whether it's digital links or RFID, and really looking at maybe even a labor spend around using paper and clipboards or incomplete you know, log sheets um, and what that's really costing. So I think as we've worked with operators to show an ROI for utilizing RFID or the you know, a digital link and or both, um, we've had a very compelling um, story around the ROI. Um, and a lot of operators set out thinking that it's going to be a, maybe a financial investment for that traceability, but rather they quickly identify additional 
kind of maybe savings or ROIs and, and use cases by digitizing those supply chains within their operations. Okay, thank you. Another question we have is when you look at full value chains, there is different identification technology adoption across the board. And are there any solutions that blend these technologies to link all necessary info across a digital supply chain? Okay. Can, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Uh, when you look at a full value chains, there is different ID technology adoption across, for example, like warehouses can use RFID, but the consumers cannot. Are there any solutions that blend ID technologies to link all necessary info across a digital supply chain? Yeah, so if you have, um, yes, and so if we look at the IoT devices like RFID and whether an operator is just using them um, in their own business for maybe other value purposes versus kind of shared technology through the supply chain. Um, it's it's really for the end user. Where, where the last stop is for these identifiers are uh, that finally reach the consumer is is going to be realized. So your data or whatever the carrier is um, in that supply chain is only going to be as good as the content from where it was first, um, you know, identified. So whether it's not, a, if it's not at a farm, if it's at, say, a distributor to like maybe a restaurant, um, then, you know, you may not have, you may not have to all the data that you need in order to share that with your consumer. So digital link though is a really a good bridge between yes, consumers cannot use RFID, um, the kind of RAIN RFID that we utilize today within the supply chain. That's why we know it's very important to have other processes in a, like a food service operation or grocer that can that can bridge those gaps between technologies like a digital link to communicate with consumers about um, their products. Okay, thank you. And we'll end on this question. Uh, how has the pandemic shifted uh, food safety plans? Uh, yes, it, it's done a lot in um, in the environment, there's obviously a lot of Ease consumer facing um, things. It, you know, consumers see the kind of the physical part of it, right, along around the social distancing and barriers um, in food and um, spacing perhaps of tables. But what we have found is that it's accelerated some of the brands that have recognized the need for uh, stronger standard adoptions like GS1 standards. And it's actually propelled them to uh, make some quicker definitive decisions around implementing some different traceability and digitizing um, operations within their uh, you know, within their four walls, one one of the obvious ones that came from that pandemic was around food waste, and um, a lot of operators, if they could have had that visibility into you know where their products were through the supply chain, what was being perhaps shipped from their distributor, or what was at their uh, maybe a franchisee looking at restaurants. Being able to kind of have better visibility um, in this is realized that that they could have much quicker made some decisions around um, you know food waste avoidance um, during that time and in order to you know maybe put the food where it's needed most um, at the beginning of that crisis. Okay, hey, Amy, thank you so much for your time today and uh, all the knowledge you uh, gave us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.